Hey, back in the fall, I decided to finally bite the bullet and uh, upgrade to lithium batteries from our four AGM batteries here in the RV. And at the time, I really only talked about the installation, getting, you know, those four Battleborns installed. Still pretty happy with that. It's pretty cool. But I didn't really address the why, you know, why we went that route and uh, what are the other steps involved with uh, getting those lithium batteries kind of integrated into the rest of the RV charging system. I know a lot of folks have been asking those questions. And now that we've been boondocking almost 100% of the time out here in Arizona for the last three months or so, I can really talk about our experiences and what are some of the benefits we've seen and address some of those other issues. So let's get to it. So first of all, why Battleborn batteries? Well, I had a lot of things to consider for my particular RV. One of them was just physical limitations. I wanted to put them in this space here. And, you know, I looked at all the different battery manufacturers as I was trying to figure out which ones to get. This one just seemed to fit my space better. I wanted at least 400 amp hours in the RV since I had 450 amp hours of AGM. So 400 lithium was going to be just right for me. And, you know, this just worked out perfectly. In fact, it's really snug in here. I decided to go with Battleborn for a number of reasons beyond just that. And it's just the overall value of these uh, and the reputation and, you know, what other people were saying about them just made it the best choice for me. And the nice thing I liked about them was the 10 year warranty. And, uh, you know, the fact that there's a lot of information out there about these batteries. So somebody like me who really wants to research everything. There was a lot of information to digest and uh, so far I'm pretty happy. I was able to actually get a discount on that. This is not sponsored by the way. Battleborn did not pay for this video. I bought these with my own cash and I was able to get a discount through the escapers or the escapees uh, RV club membership and I think I paid individually about $875 $78 each. So about $125 discount off of the uh, off of the $9.99 price. But so far, pretty happy with them because I got what I was looking for. Pretty much a one and done solution. I'm hoping that these are going to be, you know, the last batteries I need for a long, long time. Well, by now I'm sure you're well aware of the, the benefits of, of going to lithium batteries in your RV. And all of those benefits are things that I was interested in, starting with the weight, because each one of those Battleborn batteries weighs about 29 pounds compared to the AGM batteries I had. Each one of them weighed about 70 pounds, full of lead. <laughs> and uh, to be able to, to reduce the weight on that compartment from about 280 pounds of weight, you know, down to just over 100. That's that's significant. And anytime you can, you know, shed some weight in your RV, it's a good thing. Now, the capacity is another issue. I and mean, it seems like going from 450 amp hours of AGM down to 400 uh, lithium is a downgrade, but really it isn't because the uh, lead acid batteries, you should only discharge them down to 50% if you want to prolong their life, which means you only have half of that capacity available to you at any time. So for my 450 amp hours of AGMs, I only had 225 amp hours of capacity that I could really use. So with the lithium, you know, there's 400 amp hours of the lithium batteries, and I have most of that 400 amp hours available to me. So I really have to uh, change my mindset in terms of, you know, looking at the capacity of my batteries and figuring out what I can actually use. So it really is an upgrade going uh, from the 450 AGM to the 400 of lithium. Now you really start to see some benefit of lithium over AGM or any lead acid battery when we start talking about charging and discharging because lead acid batteries, even the AGMs I had, 
they really suffered uh, when you started to put a really large load on it. So if I were to run the microwave or anything large like that, uh, you could really see the the battery taking a hit, and I can see that in my uh, in my inverter display here, which shows uh, you know the voltage that it's taken from the battery. Now before I uh, remove the uh, the AGMs, I did a little test of this uh, using my hot water heater on electric mode, which draws a lot of current. So when I turned it on, you can really see that uh, that the power being drawn or the voltage dropping on the inverter display here while that um, water heater was running. Now if we do the same test using our lithium batteries now, we'll see a slightly different result. Now we were still able to run equipment like our microwave and hair dryer and uh, you know this uh, induction plate, things like that on our AGM battery bank as well, but you could really tell that it was taking a hit and it took four AGM batteries uh, to, to be able to do that and using it with our 2000 watt inverter. Now the reason for that and any lead acid battery is because of that battery chemistry, it's affected by this Fukert effect or Fukert, however you pronounce it. But you've seen the charts, you know, where it kind of goes down like that which is the more load you put on a lead acid battery, the less it's able to actually provide. So that's why, you know, with those larger loads, you know, it really starts to struggle. And we saw that when we're looking at the, that water heater uh, test that I did earlier. But that's just not the case with lithium. You know, when we're powering a lot of this stuff with the lithium battery bank now, uh, using the same inverter, you can just tell that it's it's running much more smoothly. You know, with the AGM, you just kind of hear it struggling a little bit, but uh, the lithium, no problems at all. Now we've seen major improvements charging the lithium batteries over charging the AGM or any lead acid battery we've had. And that's primarily due to the fact that lithium batteries have a much lower resistance, which means they can take as much energy as you pump into them at one time. The uh, AGM or lead acid batteries go through this absorption phase when they hit about 80%, which means they take less energy in because they're trying to gradually top off the batteries. But lithiums uh, are much different in that uh, they just take as much as they can until they're just about full. And that's really had a huge impact, especially when uh, charging from solar, because uh, with solar, you're, you're, you have a limited uh, window during the day when you're actually pulling in energy from the sun, and you wanna be able to capture as much of that energy as possible. With the lithium batteries, you can, because it'll take anything that you can throw at it in a shorter period of time and absorb it. Uh, the AGMs wouldn't do that. You wouldn't be, uh, collecting or wouldn't be taking as much of that energy that you're generating here from your solar panels uh, during that absorption phase. So it's kind of wasted. A lot of folks have uh, have said that moving from uh, from AGM or lead acid to lithium is like adding an additional solar panel or two. And I would say that that's, uh, that's pretty accurate. It, it kind of feels that way. It just keeps charging and charging and charging and charging until it's full. Whereas the uh, AGM, they'll charge and charge and then really slow down. And then for the next few hours, it's in that absorption phase and it just goes really slow before it tops off to 100%. In order for me to set up the charging from solar, there's really very little I had to do to the solar charge controllers, which are located in here. Now, since I have a programmable Victron solar charge controllers, you know, I had access to all the settings. So I, I could have set all the specific settings that I needed to uh, for these specific batteries. And most battery manufacturers will tell you exactly what those settings should be for their battery. Now, the nice thing with uh, Battleborn is that their charge profile is set up so that it uh, it matches the the charge profile of an AGM battery. So if you have a setting on your solar charge controller for AGM, if you don't have one for um, say lithium, then you could probably use that. But Battleborn also has a lot of information on their website in terms of how to configure uh, different types of solar charge controllers. So be sure to check that out if you end up going with Battleborn. But yeah, again, I had to do very little on my end to, to get the solar working. But the main differences are that, you know, you don't necessarily 
uh, need to float uh, a lithium battery and they don't have an absorption phase and uh, you know, those are the main difference. Oh, definitely no equalization and uh, AGMs don't equalize either. So pay attention to all those differences when you're setting up uh, your solar charge controller. Now, in order to be able to charge the lithium batteries, you know, the Battleborns with my converter charger, I actually had to replace the existing one I had. Now, the uh, original converter charger I had was a Parallax 7100 that came with our Class C and this is a 30 amp system that we have and I ultimately upgraded to a multi-stage charger a, a progressive dynamics multi-stage charger and you know swap that whole thing out so I could you know have a multi-stage charger and that's been working really really well for many many years but it just wouldn't work with the lithium because uh, it just wouldn't kick into charge mode because the lithium batteries actually uh, sit at a higher level voltage wise so I think the the detection circuitry in here wasn't detecting that it needed to be charged because it was sitting at a higher voltage so uh, what I would do to get around it was to manually uh, hit a button here and it would kick it into bulk charge mode and until it would get up to 14.6 volts which for the Battleborns is is a full charge and then when it reached that point I would turn it off and uh, switch it back to a to a to the float which would be like 13.4 volts or something like that so I ultimately swapped it out got a lithium compatible uh, model from progressive dynamics and it was a super easy swap out because it's the exact same footprint as this one same wires and everything it even came with a new uh, circuit DC circuit board here which I ended up just swapping out didn't really have to but I but I it came with it so I went ahead and did it and it was a really easy setup and now it detects everything correctly and when I'm plugged into shore power it uh, charges up the lithium batteries just fine Well, since hitting the road with this setup, we've really had zero issues with the batteries themselves. Uh, they've just been working and there's we haven't had to do anything or really make any adjustments to the setup at all. Uh, in fact, uh, my favorite uh, feature is probably the rate at which they charge because it's, it's just nice knowing that with just a little bit of sun or with just a, enough sun, I can, uh, you know, dump all of that energy into the batteries and it's going to take it you know I like watching that meter just kind of go from 85, 86, 87, 88 boom 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 tick up steadily up to a hundred percent and uh, and not slow down so that's that's really good because in the AGM situation that we had it would hit that absorption phase and it would just slow down but a typical day for us uh, you know we would use a lot of energy in the in the nighttime we would be watching TV or Netflix and making microwave popcorn and stuff like that and at, at our worst so if we had a really heavy load during the evening maybe we'd take it down to 70 percent but uh, on a light evening maybe down to 90 percent or just in the high 80s so being able to recharge that quickly the next day is is really nice and not have to worry about how much you're really using at night now what i would uh, also do when it would hit about 88 percent during the day i would switch the uh, our absorption fridge over to uh, electric and be be able to power our fridge on electric through most of the day probably starting at about 10 o'clock in the morning through like five o'clock in the afternoon if we had a decently decently <laughs> a, a decent sunny day to 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 get that uh, solar charge coming in so that works out really well to save our propane and uh, you know it also ensures that I still have a full charge at the end of the day for that next night so that's kind of a typical day for us and we've really enjoyed it um, all we have to do is uh, just enjoy ourselves out here in the desert and power just keeps coming in even on a rainy day we have enough solar to generate enough power so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to hear your experiences with lithium as well and if you have any questions or comments drop them below in the description you know where and I'll also put some links to stuff that we talked about here in the video in the description as well so give it a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, oh coming up uh, stick around one thing I didn't talk about is uh, 
is that I also installed a DC to DC charger uh, to be able to charge from our alternator while we're driving. So that's also been really handy to have. If you remember from a previous video, I got rid of the generator. So, and we haven't missed it. So stick around for that video. I'll put that out as soon as I can and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.